Hello, and welcome to Microsegmentation, a powerful strategy to defend against lateral movement. My name is Jess Steinbach. I'm with Actual Tech Media, and I'm so happy to be your moderator for this demo cast today because I love demo casts. You know, many of you have heard me say this before, but the absolute best way to get to know a tool is to actually dig in and then watch it work in real time. And that's basically the entire idea behind the demo cast webinar series. There is so much research and exploration that goes into choosing the right solution for you and for your organization, and we know that it's a lot. So luckily today we have a top expert here with us from Trueford who's going to walk us through not only why you should consider micro segmentation, but we'll get to explore the platform together and discover how the Trueford solution could help protect critical workloads within your organization. So let's just zip through a few of our demo cast housekeeping things and then we can get on over to that main event there together. Okay, so first, I want to point out two things on your audience console. Now, the absolute first thing is going to be the questions tab, and then we're going to talk about the handouts tab. But let's start in that questions tab together, because questions are a really important part of the day today. You have a chance to ask questions directly of our expert speaker, and not only will we have a live Q&A session at the end of our demo, but we'll also have some members of the Trueport team here to help answer questions on live chat throughout. Now, if we don't get to your question at the end of the demo, don't worry, because we will send all the questions asked over to the Trueport team after we wrap, so you will get some answers back from those. Now, uh, you can also use that questions tab to get in touch with us today if you want to reach out to the actual tech media team. If there's any tech issues, you know, all the, the usual audio sound slide things. I do want to remind you, though, that a browser refresh is going to get rid of any of those more common tech gremlins. But if not, just shoot us a message right there in the questions tab and we'll be there to help. Now, I said there were two things that I wanted you to look at today. So the first was the questions tab. Check, did that. The second one is the handouts tab. So if you click on over to that handouts tab, you're going to find some great resources to go along with the webinar today. You can snag the white paper, a true for platform overview, a zero trust segmentation and workload protection platform that understands application behavior to protect it. There's also a solution brief on the true for platform and adapting to application behavior, plus one on micro segmentation. I mean, so much engaging reading material there for you. And I, trust me, you, when we finish the demo cast today, your brain is going to be all lit up and going 100 miles an hour. You're going to be so excited about everything you learned. And then you're going to go get coffee and some of it is going to slip away. So stop that from happening by downloading those, uh, those resources right now, set them aside, and then come back to them. So after we wrap the demo cast, you can go have your coffee and go stretch it out and then you can come back and review these resources here. And I promise you, you will be very happy to have them. Now, it is not just awesome content that we are giving away today because we also have a $300 Amazon gift card as a prize drawing, and we're going to do that at the end of our webinar. Now, you do need to be here in live attendance during the webinar in order to qualify for the prize, and all winners must meet the actual tech media prize terms and conditions. Now, if you're saying to yourself, hmm, what are those full T's and C's, Jess? No problem. Got you covered. Head on back to that handouts tab that we were just talking about. Click in, scroll down to the bottom. You'll find the full T's and C's waiting for you right there. Now, I mentioned a minute ago how much we love getting all your technical questions. And in fact, we love it so much that we actually have an extra incentive for you today. So at the end of the webinar, we will review all the questions asked and we will choose the very best question from the whole group. And we will send them a $50 Amazon gift card as a thank you for being extra awesome. Now, as a reminder, it does not matter if we read your question out or not during the live Q&A today. So even if we don't get to your question in our discussion after the demo cast, you are still entered to win just by asking that question. So everybody right now, stretch it out. You can get a little practice around in. If you haven't already said hi in the, in the questions console there, say hi, say good morning, greet the community that's out there. That's your warm up round. And then get those questions in. It's going to bring up the whole energy of the event and you could be entered to win that $50 Amazon gift card. So win, win there, folks. And that's it. That's all. I told you I would keep it short and sweet. And now we are ready to get to our incredible webinar today. I am so excited to introduce you all to our expert speaker here with us, Nick Lisa. He's the sales engineer at Truefort. He's here with us today to tell us a little bit more about micro segmentation and what we can accomplish with the Truefort platform. I can't wait to dive into this demo cast today. So I'm going to bring Nick up here on the screen with me and let's get on to it. 
All right. Well, hey, Nick, thank you so much for joining us here for this awesome demo cast and webinar. I am so excited to explore the Trueport solution with you today. Yeah, thank you, Jess. I appreciate being here. I'm very excited to share the platform with everybody today. Yeah, well, before we dive in though, Nick, can you tell us a little bit about the, the journey that you're going to take us on today? What can we all expect to learn about in our discussion and in the demos? Yeah, definitely. So I'll be showing off the Truefort platform and how we can really take you all the way from discovering your assets and just getting visibility in the environment, all the way through to real-time response, being able to implement micro-segmentation, all based on behavioral profiling. Um, so definitely something very exciting that we'll be going through today. Yeah, this, I'm really pumped up about this. This is going to be a great day. Uh, well, jumping right into it, uh, because the question that's up on the screen for us right now is a big one. You know, we hear this a, a lot from our community, you know, that struggle to balance efficiency and, and wanting to move quickly and not put up obstacles for your teams with also creating a secure environment. So can we actually do both of those things? <laughs> Yeah, no, definitely. They're not mutually exclusive. So what we want to do is really give these security teams uh, a powerful platform that allows them to leverage things like automation um, to really implement impactful controls in an efficient manner. So, Well, I like impact and efficiency. Those are good things. <laughs> And, uh, you know, we're, we're hearing more and more about these various risks uh, and, the, and the potential solutions. You know, I think it's top of mind for all of us as humans and uh, within our organizations. Um, there's so much to look out for, which, you know, I don't know for a lot of us out in the audience could feel maybe a bit overwhelming. Um, so for anyone out there that is feeling a little scattered, maybe, maybe they're feeling a little stretched, um, what do they do? Where, where should they be focusing their time, their attention and their resources? Yeah, so what we're doing with Truefort is we're putting the focus on really what's running the business. It's the applications and those corresponding workloads that are really helping run all of those day-to-day -day operations. And that's what we want to help protect. Perfect. Okay, nice and easy. Uh, well, look, on this slide, I have to say, Nick, my eyes are going right to the stat that you have here. Um, so is this, is this true? Over half of CISOs are saying that apps and workloads are the absolute most vulnerable breach point. Tell, tell us more about this. Yeah, definitely. So apps, I mean, they store some of the most critical data, but they're also one of the most vulnerable surfaces uh, in the environment. So examples like ransomware, exploiting legacy or misconfigured systems, or even compromised credentials that allow attackers to really move laterally and escalate their privileges and really spread throughout the environment. And those are just some of the most common attack vectors. And they're difficult to detect with the wrong tools. But Truefort's real-time behavioral monitoring, that's what really allows these teams to detect even these most sophisticated attacks and put that focus on that application in the workload environment. Okay, this is perfect, Nick, because up next, you know, we, we've talked a lot about why we're all here. Uh, and that's, that's a really good sort of place to start from. But I want to get into the specifics with Truefort. So let's, let's dive in talk to us about your platform. Definitely. So let's, let's break down at a high level how the platform works. So we'll actually work our way up from the bottom. So we're really helping cover and collect telemetry from any workload in the environment. So whether it's in legacy 2003 Windows server or it's containers up in the cloud, we're able to really protect all of these workloads. And how we collect that telemetry is through an endpoint agent. So if you already have uh, an existing EDR, like a Sentinel-1 or a CrowdStrike, we can simply tap off of that telemetry. You don't have to install anything else in your environment. But for those gaps that might be happening on, say, a CrowdStrike where they don't cover Windows 2003, we can then implement our own Truefort agent as well, um, even on things like Kubernetes clusters, as I mentioned. Um, all your different flavors of Linux, uh, even Solaris and AIX, we help cover that whole gambit. Um, so pulling in that telemetry, that then gets fed into the platform, as you see at the top there. So number one is getting the visibility discovering all the workloads and giving you the querying ability to be able to ask questions about the environment. Hey, what's going on here? So really being able to impact and see because you can't protect what you can't see. And number two is the creation of these behavioral baselines that we mentioned. So we take that real live telemetry that we're gathering and we use that to actually establish a behavioral normal. Here's what we expect to be happening in the environment. 
And then driven off of that behavioral profile, that's really the core. Then we start doing things like alerting on deviations and doing real-time response actions to, say, kill a process if it deviates from that normal state. And then that just leads and drives all these different controls at the top. Uh, we're obviously going to be focusing on micro-segmentation today, so zero-trust segmentation. But we have other capabilities, things like service account analytics, doing things like file integrity monitoring or workload hardening. So it really is a platform approach. And no matter what operating systems and workloads you're running and wherever they might be running, whether it's on-premise or in the cloud or a hybrid approach of all the above, we're able to really get you the visibility and the control structure on top of all those application workloads. Mm. Well, I, I think those each of those layers sounds really interesting. And I know that we're going to dig into a few of them in some of our demos here today. Um, the first one I want to start with, though, is visibility. Um, and, and I love what you said, you know, you, you can't protect what you can't see. Um, and I, I think that's a great pl place to kind of get started today. So talk to us a little bit more about why visibility is important. Yeah, I mean, as we say, you can't protect what you can't see. So not having an understanding of what's already in the environment, what's going on today, you can't really protect anything if you don't know that that workload or that application exists or what connections it's actually making out there. And we're really helping to shine a light on this. And that's really our step zero. Um, you start with the visibility because that's really the most crucial foundational point um, that we're working off of. So yeah, that's why, that's why we see visibility as being very important. Well, perfect. It sounds like that's where we should uh, start in our demos. So do you want to hop in and, and give us an idea of what we're actually looking at? Yeah, definitely. Let's, let's get started on some visibility. All right. So now we're jumping into the Truefort platform itself. So where we're starting out here, this is our application dashboard you can essentially think of it as. So this is showing you a high level view of how are all of my applications currently communicating. So as I mentioned, this is a real time platform. So throughout the demo, you might notice lines move and boxes shift um, because that's the nature of network connections or processes going up and down and us really uh, showing you that change. So as we can see here, I can get a quick insights into what a specific app is doing. I can highlight, say, clearing, and I can see what else is it talking to at the current moment. We're noticing that there's green lines and red lines as well, and that's our behavioral engine uh, in play, which we'll talk about shortly. But this is showing us we're seeing a lot of normal connections, but there are one or two of those red lines showing us some abnormal connections going on. And I can take this same graphical view, and if I flip this over into a tabular view, it starts to give us more details about what those lines actually were representing. So as we can see here, we're getting app to app uh, communication flows. What app's talking to what app? We can quickly see things like, is our development environment talking to our production environment? Or are we using some type of unencrypted port like an HTTP or a telnet? And really how many sessions are occurring between those applications? So this gets me a very good high level understanding of how my apps are communicating with one another. But when I want to get more details about a specific application, I can actually dive down into that app. So let's go look at the payments application here. So what we're going to notice now is a bit more details about what's going on. We're seeing individual workloads in the middle there. So these are the actual workloads that make up the payments application. We see that they're rolled up to their respective roles. So we have web servers, load balancers, app servers, and databases. And we can see how they're actually correlating with one another, how they're communicating. S similar to the last view, I can highlight a particular workload and I can get insights into what it's communicating with right now. But as we look over on the left side, those are actually known entities in the environment that we're seeing communication flows to. These could be other applications. They could be things like the DNS server that we're communicating with or, or a file server. But then on the right side in those orange or unregistered nodes box, those are things that we have not accounted for yet in Truefort. So this could be simply something that was missed during the agent deployment. We just haven't accounted for it yet. It could be shadow IT, something you didn't know existed in the environment, but we see the communication flows to and from it. Or it's simply a brand new network connection coming into the environment. But this is really giving you insights into how we can show you visibility throughout the entire application environment, even things we don't know about or external connections that are being made we're still being able to represent those to you. 
Similarly to the last view as well, we have a tabular view on top of the graphical view. This tabular view, though, starts to give a lot more detailed information about what's going on in this application. So as you'll notice, we're not just looking at network connections anymore, but we're also correlating the user, the process, and the identity. Um, so we're getting a quick understanding of what user drove what process, and then what was the corresponding network connection that they were creating. All of that with the application context in mind, what app was talking to what app when it was trying to do so. And this really is the core telemetry and the fundamental um, foundational telemetry that we're using in these behavioral profiles to be able to understand all the way down to the user and process level, what is the normal interactions and behaviors of the application environment. So this really shows you how Truefort provides you with the visibility needed to understand what your applications are really doing. I love that, Nick. That was a, a great insight into some of the visibility that we talked about earlier. But I have to say, I'm, I'm wondering now. Um, so, you know, we just saw how we can get an idea of what is there. And you mentioned, you know, we saw some of those, the squiggly lines and some of them are green and some of them are red. So there were some abnormalities. So how are you actually establishing what normal looks like in order to see that difference between what is not normal? Yeah, so that's actually where our behavioral profiling will come into play. Um, we're going to be able to really take all that telemetry that we're gathering and turn it really into almost an allow list. It becomes, here's the normal activity that we're seeing. Here's what we want the application to be doing. And we can then go enforce and alert against that behavioral profile. And our automation on this front is what really makes this useful. And the contextual insights into what application, what user, what process... We're not bucketing them separately. We're actually correlating them all together. And that really makes it a lot easier for us humans to go in there and understand what's happening. Yeah, it's important to keep us humans in the loop. <laughs> uh, so can Definitely. we get into maybe uh, and take a look at what that next step looks like? Yeah, definitely. Let's hop back in that demo environment and I'll actually show you how these behavioral profiles are built. Perfect. Let's do it. All right, so now we're back in the demo environment, and what we're currently looking at is an actual profile that was built out. So what we're doing here is we're compiling all of that telemetry that we're gathering in, and after our learning period, uh, the behavioral engine is going to take all of this together, it's going to deduplicate it, it's going to classify it wherever possible, and then what we're spitting out is essentially that allow list that we're talking about. So being able to correlate and tell you this user is allowed to run these processes with these arguments and make those network connections. So by defining that normal behavior, we now understand when a user might be deviating from their normal um, behaviors, when a network connection is deviating, or even if a process is deviating. So having this stitched together contextually really gives us deep insights into what's supposed to happen on these machines. So this is really the basis of your micro segmentation policy. Once you have this behavioral profile built out, you already essentially have your micro seg policy. So I can simply click on policy details here, and this will show me this same behavioral profile, but in a firewall fo policy format. So I can see the individual IP addresses and ports that I'm gonna be allowing. And then when I simply select deploy rules, whether you're using our own agent or one of those third-party EDRs, we simply push those rules back out to the host-based firewalls for you to get host-based micro-segmentation, all based on top of a behavioral profile that we're seeing here. So this is pretty quick to show off, but it is a very powerful tool that we're leveraging. Um, and this behavioral approach to micro-segmentation really allows you to enforce these controls much more quickly and much more efficiently. Awesome. I love that. That was a, a quick and, and efficient look at uh, the Truefort platform. Uh, Nick, I have to say, though, I'm curious because, you know, when we walk through the, the platform and the layers at the start, you know, we started with visibility and then looking at, you know, how we build those behavioral um, identities and, and kind of finding what is normal and what is maybe a little bit more of concern, what's abnormal. Um, so now that we have the insight and, and we've identified something that is potentially a threat or, or of concern, 
how do we actually take action? What's what's the next step there? Yeah, so TrueFort's capabilities don't just stop at detection and enforcement. It really provides powerful incident response capabilities. And I mean, I'd love to just show it off to you in, in another demo. So let's let's dive back into that demo environment. All right, so we're back in the platform again. And what we're currently looking at is one of our applications. And we're going to go through a little incident response journey. So I'm pretending I'm a SOC analyst now, and I'm trying to investigate um, some alerts and some anomalies that were going on. So with Truefort, I can open up this application's specific alert pane, and I can start getting some real insights into what alerts that I've been seeing, what behavioral anomalies have been going on. So these alerts, they have a lot of contextual information with them. So the alert doesn't only just tell me, hey, you have a network connection that's outside of scope, but what was the user and what was the process behind that connection? What application was it coming from? Where was it going to? And on top of that, the alert has a snapshot of all the processes, all the network connections that were happening on the machine at the time of the anomaly. So this first off just gives me a lot of contextual information. I don't have to go stitch together information from this logs over here, this telemetry over there, and try and correlating it together. This is all being done for me with Truefort. But as we know, as incident responders, all of these alerts, all of these anomalies, they happened in the past. So what do I do to go investigate that further? With Truefort, we have DVR functionality. So just like your TV at home when you want to go rewind time and re replay your shows, we can do the same thing with your application environment. So say I wanted to go back to last Wednesday and investigate the anomaly that was happening. I can actually take this slider and I can go minute by minute, hour by hour, and walk through the application. So I can see how have things changed over time. The anomaly started at 9.30 a.m. So we can start here with this view, and then we can slowly progress and watch how things changed over that time. But even deeper than just looking at the application itself, maybe I need to investigate the particular workload that it happened on. Let's say the web server here. And what I can do is now I can get insights into a full process tree of what was happening here. So as I walk through minute by minute again, we can start to get understandings about all the parent-child processes, their corresponding uh, network connections that they created. And I can quickly highlight one of these and see, okay, why were you making connections to that .83 address? And now I have an understanding of the parent and child process that actually drove that connection. So as an incident responder, being able to have this at my fingertips and to be within 60 seconds being very deep insights into what we're actually looking at, um, this is just very powerful. And that just shows off some of the capabilities of Truefort's incident response um, at this realm view. But we also have a reporter functionality. This is where you get to do your real-time querying, ask questions to the environment, and build customized dashboards like we did here, where this is just a simple dashboard where I want to get an understanding of my app risk posture. And we're doing that by understanding which applications have micro-segmentation put in place. Which ones are left more exposed because those uh, segmentation rules aren't pushed out? So I can see my payments application, only 25% of the workloads are being enforced with micro-segmentation. So this lets me know at a very quick glance, where do I need to start taking actions and starting to do more controls to start really locking down my environment and implementing those micro-segmentation policies? But that's just a quick insight into some of Truefort's uh, incident response and reporting capabilities. And... While there's plenty more to show off of the platform, that's all the demo time we have for today. Um, but I was very glad that I got to show off some of these capabilities for you. Yeah, Nick, I love that. And I have to say, you know, it jumped out at me a little bit that being able to see your your high risk areas, because, you know, I asked you right at the start, uh, where where do people focus? You know, it can feel a little overwhelming and you don't always know where to start. And, and what that is providing for a, a team is, the exact place that they need to start. Where is their biggest risk category? So that's that's a great feature. Yeah, definitely. It's very powerful for these customers to be able to just take all of this telemetry, all of this raw data and make it actionable, make it insightful. Yeah, and that's that that actionable bit, actionable bit uh, is I think what really connects in with what we've got up on the screen here. And, and I'm so excited to to hear your take on that, on adaptability really in particular, because I think, 
you know, as we know, things in our industry just don't sit still for very long. You know, the threats are evolving, the solutions are evolving, uh, technologies are always changing. So, uh, and, and the organizations themselves are as well. And I think a lot of folks in our audience are constantly thinking about those growth goals and scalability uh, and mobility, agility, all those <laughs> illities, um, and, and kind of how to maintain security as, as they think about that kind of uh, growth. So talk to us about adaptability. Definitely. So as we saw with those behavioral profiles, they're not set in stone whatsoever. They're dynamic and they're meant to to work and adapt with your application environment as it changes. Because we know applications, they get updates, they turn into legacy, or they just get removed altogether. New applications come along. So these profiles and this pull platform is growing with the environment as it grows as well. So being able to take those profiles and those behavioral baselines and adapt them to changes and updates and, and configuration, um, it really allows you to grow with the platform. Um, so that's really how we're helping you manage and adapt and understand the changes uh, in your environment as they go along. That's awesome. Uh, well, Nick, I have to say, I have had so much fun doing the demos with you, but I know our audience also has a lot of exciting questions for you. So um, before we wrap up today, can we dig into a few of these audience questions together? Yeah, I'd love to. All right. Uh, so I want to start with this one. Um, am I going to need to deploy an agent or a network device? Yes. Yeah, so if you're currently leveraging one of those third-party EDRs, like we talked about, a CrowdStrike or Sentinel-1, there's no need to install any new agents. We'll simply tap into that existing telemetry and start feeding the platform. But if you're not running one of those, you will be installing our, our lightweight TrueFord agent. Um, it really doesn't hold much, uh, much weight on the platforms, on the workloads themselves. Um, and it starts feeding all that telemetry and giving you all those real-time controls um, throughout the platform. Perfect. Uh, you were just talking about legacy tools and uh, we have a great question here. So for a team that has a set of existing tools in their IT environment, uh, is TrueFort going to integrate well with what they've already got set up? Yeah, definitely. So we have a, a data fabric that really allows us uh, using our APIs and a lot of different functionality to hook into all these different existing tools you might have. Say you want to take your alert and you want to forward it off to your uh, SIM instance, your SOC, your SOAR, whatever it might be, we'll simply go and take that alert, forward it along to where your analysts are already looking at. Um, say you want to integrate with your CMDB so we can give you live updates when we see new workloads. We can simply make those integrations as well. So we really want to exist as, a, as another puzzle piece in the environment to really connect in and integrate with all those different tools you're already leveraging. I like that. I like that. The, the puzzle piece is a good, good analogy. Um, I, I'm so glad that somebody asked this question because, you know, we were kind of brushing past this a little bit earlier with just the amount of overwhelm and overall, uh, you know, kind of stretch too thin feeling uh, that I think a lot of people, especially in security teams have. Um, so a question from the audience here that I think really ties into that is, um, you know, our, our company already has too many tools uh, or, or a lot of tools that are creating alert fatigue. And there's little or no focus on application context with that. That's interesting. Um, can you quickly cover again uh, how you would help this this individual, this organization address that? Yeah, so that's where our behavioral approach really comes into play. A lot of these tools, they come at it from the signature and threat detection um, space where they're only relying on um, signatures really to try and determine if something's abnormal or not, where when we can determine Here's the normal behavior. When something deviates from that, we know it's actually something to be worrisome about because this application has a set number of functions and only does these operations. When it starts straying from that, that's really an abnormality. Um, and this is what really allows us to detect those most sophisticated attacks. And really that application context that we mentioned makes it more human friendly for us to interact and understand, hey, my payments application is all of a sudden talking to my HR database. This is something that should never happen. Or if I'm just looking at raw network logs, I might say, hey, IPA is talking to IPB. I got to go figure out what that really means. And it just adds complexity on top of all this. Mm -hmm. So we really want to help reduce that alert fatigue by showing you, hey, this thing is just doing something it's not supposed to, rather than, hey, this thing might look like this certain attack that we think it might be. Um, so that's really where we're differentiating and trying to help reduce that alert fatigue and give you that application next. That's so important. 
Um, this question here connects back into, you know, when the, the puzzle piece analogy that you were talking about earlier. And so uh, one of our audience members is wondering about hybrid environments. So they say, I have a hybrid environment. I'm utilizing multiple clouds and data centers. So is Trueport going to be able to accommodate that environment? Yeah, definitely. That's no problem for us. So you could have instances in AWS, GCP, Azure, local data center here, local data center there. For us, all that matters is what application do those workloads help run? That's how we're going to correlate all this information together. We're going to give you that same pane of glass, the same platform, no matter where those workloads reside. Um, all of them are just being provided with an application context. And no matter where they come from, they're all funneling into the same platform that's giving you the same structure and controls around those workloads. Well, we're getting pretty close to time here, but I'm going to sneak in one last question from the audience because uh, I think this is also important. You know, we, we do need to move quickly. Um, and so it's important to kind of think about uh, setup time and, and uh, the impact that that might have. So uh, question here, how long does it take to discover the different applications and, and communications in within my environment? Yeah, so that's a great question. So we can start with anything you have. If you only know about four out of the hundred servers you might have in an environment, we'll start with those four. And with the help of us and our customer success team, alongside your team, we're going to really start building out these application views like we saw in that very first demo to start discovering where are all the other workloads in the environment? What are they doing? Rationalizing, do they belong? Do we need them? And, and, um, and accounting for them. And this process, it usually only takes a few weeks um, because on day one, it's going to be lighting up like a Christmas tree. You're going to start seeing these connections going all over the place and you're going to just start understanding and correlating. All right, this thing belongs here. This one belongs there. And together again with our customer success team, who's great at doing this, um, we're going to really help you get to that point where you really know your environment well. And it's only going to take a couple of weeks. I really want to emphasize that because I think it's so important and, and uh, a lot of folks ask about, you know, training and support and you've mentioned your customer service support uh, or service and support team a few times. Um, so it sounds like the, the true Fort team is, is really there to help uh, uh, folks kind of get this rolling within their organization and make sure that they're set up for success there. Definitely. Yeah. We want to give you that white glove treatment. We don't want to just hand you the product and say, good luck. We want to really walk you through and <laughs> teach you how to fish. Yeah, I love that because, yeah, as we all know, a, a good tool without the right training uh, is not going to be able to function. So it doesn't matter how great the, the solution is if, if you don't know how to use it. So that's that's really important, that support. Um, well, I, I hate to say this because honestly, Nick, I could talk to you about this all day and I've just had a great time chatting with you at really exciting demos. Um, but I think we'll have to leave it there before you take off though, for anyone out there in the audience that has just totally fallen in love with Trueport, as I'm sure they all have, and they're ready to dive in or they, they want to learn more. Um, you know, what do they do? What's their first step? Yeah, no, I, we would love you guys to reach out to us. Uh, put in a demo request on our website. So you see the link up there, truefort.com. That QR code will actually bring you directly to um, our demo request form. And we would love to, whether it's me or my other SEs and our team, love to really give you a, your own customized demo and answer your questions and really get you some insights and start you down the journey of implementing Truefort. I love that. That's so important because, yeah, I mean, again, we, we sort of brushed the surface. We got some great information today, but I'm sure there's a lot more to dig into. And of course, you want to figure out how it's going to work specific to your uh, organization and what your needs are. So, um, you know, the, as, as we always say, the best way to get to know a, a tool, a solution is to really get in the sandbox with it. So um, I hope those of you out there today that are excited about Trueport, that you're uh, using that QR code right now and, and booking your, your personal demo, because uh, who doesn't want to talk more with Nick? That's, that's a great that's thing. Right. Uh, Nick, thank you so much for being here with us today. This has been a lot of fun. Yeah, thank you very much, Jess. And I really appreciate everybody coming and everybody's time today. Well, back at you, Nick. What an awesome demo and all around just fun webinar this has been. Uh, and the fun is not over yet because it is time for a prize giveaway. Now, I want to remind you all that you do need to be here present live at the demo cast in order to win. Today's winner for $300 Amazon gift card is Sashin Sood from Kansas. Sashin Sood from Kansas. You have won a $300 Amazon gift card. Congratulations. As always, we will be in touch about claiming your prize after we wrap today. 
And with that, on behalf of the Actual Tech Media team, I really want to thank Truefort for making this entire demo cast possible. A giant thank you again to Nick for such an interesting demo and really a great chat. I hope that you all enjoyed this high-level review of the Truefort platform as much as I did, and I hope that you feel powered up to start maybe a little bit more research on your own, because sessions like these are, are really just the start. And now you get to head out and you get to explore on your, your own. You get to do some of your own research. And as you heard from Nick, there are some in-depth personalized demos just waiting for you at Truefort. And don't forget before you leave about those handouts in the handouts section. So be sure to download that white paper and both the solution briefs and save those for reading later. I promise you will want those. Well, folks, whether it's another demo cast, maybe a tech talk, an expert series session, a summit, a mega cast, or an eco cast, I can't wait to see you all at another webinar again soon. And until then, I hope you all have an absolutely beautiful rest of your day.